Good afternoon everyone, I am Mr. Ish. I want to present a relatively important video here on avoiding these common integration errors. I've picked three common integration errors that I see quite frequently and ones which I was doing at the very beginning myself too. These are important to remember. By making these types of errors you end up corrupting your answer from the get-go and all the effort you place in terms of integration ends up being a waste. So the first one you want to look at is not separating your integral expression correctly and what I mean by that is this. If hypothetically you have a integral let's just use from a to b and it ends up having a sum or a difference of functions whether it's a positive or a minus and something like this it doesn't even have to be true it could be a chain of them and in addition to this you ended up having some sort of a coefficient over here which I'm using alphabet letters for instead of numericals and you were to expand this you know all of this is your integrand but the integrand here happens to be a sum or a difference of two functions going to expand this you would have to do it correctly otherwise your answer would be wrong and separating integrals correctly would require you not to forget the coefficient as well as not to forget how you separate things properly with regards to their intervals if you are to open this up you would have a or b with an interval here a to b f of x dx then you can create a new integral over here plus and minus then you have to really bring in your coefficient a or b i'm just using a or b because it could be a fraction it could be just a regular coefficient to a non-fractional coefficient again from a to b you will have g of x here and dx you see how everything has been separated cleanly positive and minus in between. And this is the type of mistake you don't want to make where when you expand it you forget to bring a coefficient with your remainder part of your expression. An example would be if someone were to ask you to integrate something which looks like this and let's just talk about indefinite integral over here. 2 tan squared theta and you know technically or you will come to know that this is not easy to integrate you would have to somehow use a trigonometric identity and think of it as secant squared theta minus 1 d theta but here when you separate this out you cannot make the mistake of not separating out properly as I've shown you over here your separated integral expression would be this 2 secant squared theta d theta and then a minus sign right here and then another 2 because the 2 applies distributively to all the items in between here you'll have a d theta which is represented by this 1 you see you have to properly separate and distribute everything, the coefficients and your integrands. This next recommendation is be aware of the hidden antiderivative. So the error you can make is that you are not aware of the hidden antiderivative and your integration ends up missing something very important. What do I mean? If you know you see something like this, dx, there's really something hidden over here and that's x to the power of 0. When you do its antiderivative, you really end up getting x and then we, we can have a constant of integration. If you have something which looks like d theta, you end up after the integration over here, let's even put an interval, a theta come out from here. And this right here is your hidden antiderivative because you have to realize you actually have something here but to the power of 0. When you do the antiderivative using the n plus 1 rule, you end up bringing this a hidden antiderivative and it becomes apparent as the antiderivative. Good examples of something like this would be something like this pi over 2 0 you have cosine squared theta d theta and if you were to open this up by means of a power reducing identity or your half angle formula you'll have 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2 d theta and then when you open this up again you have to remember the very first one you're separating properly with the coefficients and you're not forgetting your hidden antiderivative you end up having pi over 2 0 you'll have 1 over 2 d theta splitting across a positive sign then again another one or two this is the first recommendation the first error to avoid is never forget your coefficients when you split your integrals here you'll have cosine 2 theta d theta again from 0 to pi over 2 talking specifically about this hidden antiderivative and focusing on you over here this in terms of antiderivative you have a hidden theta over here to the power of 0 when you do this integration you'll have theta to the interval pi over 2 and 0 and then you know here you'll end up getting pi over 4 as your final answer but you would only get that if you realize that you should not miss this hidden antiderivative which comes out and then that hidden antiderivative which is now manifested gets applied with regards to your coefficient over here and your interval 
How about take a look at this? You have a specific function which is f of x is equal to 1, which you know translates to y equals 1. Line happens to be this y equals 1 line over here, and you have a certain interval 0 to 2. If someone were to tell you to find the area of this interval with regards to this curve, you know you're looking from 0 to 2, you make a little line over here, and then you're looking at the area over here, right over here. You know roughly you have a rectangle, length of 2, and a height of 1. You know the area here is 2. But in terms of the integral procedure, you can do area of x, you can do from 0 to 2, 0 to 2, your function is just dx. But there is something hidden over here, it actually is this, this right here is your function. Everything here is with regards to x, in terms of the x-axis, everything is regards to that, and dx, you know y equals 1 very well fits over here, you just don't see it when you do the integration procedure, the definite integration procedure, the hidden antiderivative comes out as x. And then you know you're looking at everything from 2 to 0. You do this upper and the lower and the difference of the 2 and you end up getting 2, which very well mirrors over here. So there is always something hidden over here, especially in these type of situations and you cannot forget about these hidden antiderivatives. So this is a very common integration error that one sees is making a mistake with the natural log antiderivative calculation. Especially when you have an integral, a definite integral, which involves some sort of expression for which you get the natural log antiderivative. And then when you do the definite integration of that antiderivative, it's very easy to make a mistake when involving the natural log function. And I'm going to show you two examples which will very well exemplify this error. If you have an integral of secant x dx from 0 to pi over 4 and you are asked to do the definite integration of this it's easy to make an error doing that because you may not integrate or I may not integrate this properly. The antiderivative of this is natural log secant x plus tan x. You know we're looking at everything from a pi over 4 45 degrees to a 0. The incorrect way let's say it right here the wrong way. The wrong way of doing it is this you're putting the upper limit and the lower limit into place of each of these variables but with a single natural log sitting outside and you would be doing the secant pi over 4 minus secant 0 plus you see how you end up having a plus here because that's what lies here between our antiderivative plus tan pi over 4 minus tan 0 and this right here is the wrong way of doing it it leads you to a wrong answer secant pi over 4 you can think about using the trigonometric ratio of triangles you'll have a root 2, here you'll have a 1, here you'll have a 1, here you'll have a 0. So when you do all of this you get root 2 sitting outside of that is a natural log and you do this expression over here natural log of root 2 which all of this is the wrong way of doing it. You get a 0.346. It's wrong because you're not doing a correct definite integration procedure and you should be separating the natural log with each of these limits. Upper limit should have its own natural log, the lower limit should have its own natural log. When you don't do that, you end up putting this, like this, into each of these variables with a single natural log, which is what shows over here, that's wrong. The correct way requires a separate natural log to be applied with each of the limits. And procedure over here would be this. You do natural log secant pi over four plus tan pi over four now you have that minus a difference which comes when you're doing upper and low or lower limit definite integrations. Previously we're seeing a plus over here, but here we're seeing the correct minus. Minus natural log secant 0 plus tan 0. Now when we do this, we have a root 2 come out of here. Natural log and then we have a root 2. Here we have a plus 1. Here we have a minus natural log. We have a 1 plus 0. All of the zeros out, you end up just having natural log of root 2 plus 1. When you do this, you get a 0.8813, and this right here is the correct answer. So keep in mind, upper and lower limits have to be applied separately with their own natural logs. Then you have the minus, which comes from the definite integration procedure formula, and then you have the lower limit. Here's my upper limit right here, UL upper limits. Here's my lower limit being applied separately with its own natural log. We'll end the video with this last exemplification of this error one can make by using this as an example, natural log x, you know in terms of its antiderivative, it's x natural log x minus x. You know you're looking at everything here from three to two. Now the wrong way of integrating this, you know generally you put the upper limit, the lower limit, and the difference of the two. Let's look at the wrong way. The wrong way of doing it is this. 
you're going to be in each instance where the x is you're going to be in a joint manner putting the difference you do 3 minus 2 and then you do natural log 3 minus 2 and then minus 3 minus 2 and what do you get over here you have a 1 over here then you have a natural log of a 1 and then you have a minus 1 this zeroes out and you end up getting a minus 1 this right here is wrong the right way is you have to do it all using the upper limit the entire expression first then your difference then the lower limit and the entire expression the right way is this, you do 3 natural log 3 minus 3 and here's your minus from the definite integration procedure minus and then you do the 2, the lower limit, 2 natural log 2 minus 2 and now look, you know you're going to get a good answer over here and let's post it here you get 0 0.9095 look at this answer, 0 0.9095 versus minus 1 this right here was wrong, this right here is the correct answer Remember, when you're looking at these types of antiderivatives which involve natural log, do the entire expression using the upper limit item first. Then you do the minus sign which comes with the definite integration procedure. Then you do the lower limit as its own expression. So you have to separate them properly to get to the right answer versus combining each step together and you end up getting the wrong answer that way. So keep these in, in your mind that when you separate integrals, you have to separate them correctly with their coefficients and intervals. And when you are doing integration procedures be aware of that hidden antiderivative lastly do not make mathematical mistakes when you're dealing with a natural log antiderivative with regards to these definite integration procedures the upper limit and the lower limit have to be handled separately in terms of their own expressions otherwise you end up arriving at the wrong conclusion that's all i wanted to present in this video thank you for watching have a nice day